Hey guys, welcome back. Will here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the preferences in Reverb. Um, first things first, just to get to the preferences menu, you can either control P, and that'll bring that up, or you notice this uh, little readout here that tells you your project sample rate and bit depth. Just click that, and that'll take you right into the audio device settings. Um, I'm actually not going to talk at all about this because you can find literally anything you want right here. Just type in just anything. MIDI. It has a search function. There's really nothing I need to say other than, yeah, that's pretty much it. Only thing I'll mention are just a few key items here. In the last video, I talked about the automatic fades. Well, if you go to project and default, you can take that out. Just change the default fade length to zero and that'll stop it from doing that. You can also have it crossfade on split and give it some arbitrary value. And now when you split a clip, it will look like this. It'll have this automatic crossfade here. Beyond that, there are the project specific settings. You click this little wrench here. This is where you would set your sample rate, bit depth, and other project specific settings like that. We also have the render menu. Control Alt R brings it up or just file render. Here you can set the sample rate here, bit depth here, stereo or multi-track, and so on and so forth. One thing I'd like to call out is that you can actually burn the project's markers into the WAV file. So if I had some markers in here, I'm pressing M to insert these. Now that I've clicked write markers as cues, they'll show up in the WAV file. This can be very useful if you're doing complex looping for video game audio or video game music. Also remember that if you select a time selection, you now can render just that time selection, which is obviously very convenient. Clips themselves have their own properties windows. You press F2 on a clip. Here we can manually change the playback rate if you want or change the pitch. You can adjust the gain before it even hits the track here. You can also do clip specific effects. You click this button and now whatever effect you do here will only apply to this clip. You can see the FX button there. To make this a lot faster and save me a couple clicks, I actually put that on the action menu, which I'll show you now. If you press the question mark key, this brings up actions. Actions are basically a cross between hotkeys and macros, and they can perform any function available in Reaper. As you can see, there's a ton of them. You simply do a search, just like in the preferences menu, for whatever you want. Uh, here's the clip effects that I was talking about, and I have that set to Shift E. You can also make your own macros by combining different actions. And that's done with this menu here. For some more customizations, let's just add a couple more tracks. You can change the color of a track. It just select the track and set selected track, so on and so forth. This also changes the color of whatever data you have inside the track. You can move any window around that you want. So we have this docker here. If you press this small exclamation point down here, you can detach the docker. And now I can move this onto a different monitor if I want to. I usually like to keep it on there, but if you want it to look a little bit more like logic, then you can have your mixer on a separate area. You can also put the piano roll view into the docker here. I'm just gonna open this track and press this button, which will place it down there. I can make this my main view, so now it looks a little bit more like Logic. You can also use Reaper's inline piano roll view. I simply press E once a clip is selected, and this has basically the same functionality as the regular piano roll. And lastly, you can make your own floating toolbars. Just view floating toolbar. If you press this exclamation point, it'll bring up this window, and you can add whatever action that you want. and they'll just show up here. Make this as big or as ugly as you want and put it anywhere. And that's it, stay tuned for my next video where I'll get into some more music-oriented functions.